Hey, it's Kevin Dewey here, and welcome back to the Recording in a Home Music Studio course. In this video, we're going to talk about recording real drums. So recording real drums. Now, first off, I have to admit to you that I don't have real drums in my home music studio. I don't have access to real drums. And ideally, I would have loved to been able to include the whole process of recording real drums and showing you that process in this course and in this video. If you are somebody that has real drums and you need to record real drums, obviously I'm going to explain the process, but if you want to see it in action, you may have to look somewhere else as much as I would prefer that you just stick with me. Since I'm not showing you, I can't argue the point about that. You know, that's just the way it goes. And I'm sorry that I can't show you that stuff, but I'm going to run through the process best as I can. And if you refer to the ebook, there is lots of diagrams there, which I will flash up on the screen here as well. And hopefully we'll get through there. But if you want to see actual practical examples, I unfortunately won't be showing them. And my plan with these videos was that we would be recording all of these parts for our song as we go. Real drums is not going to be something that I will be recording for my song. So if you are going to be doing that, then this would obviously be the time to do that. So after you have gone through this video, that would be the time for you to record your real drums into your system. Unfortunately, I won't have really shown you how to do that practically. I will show you as best as I can without the actual drums. So first off, when it comes to microphones for drums, my preference is, especially in a home music studio, is the simplest solution, if you can afford it, obviously it's got to fit in your budget, is to get a pre-made pack of drum mics. Okay, you can buy kits that are already got, you know, anywhere from three, five or seven microphones. These packs are specifically designed for drums. They give you the specific microphones that the company believes suit each of the drums on your drum kit. And it saves you having to think and research all of the individual microphones. Now, in a proper studio or whatever else where they have no expense issues and they're looking at all the top of the line microphones, they will handpick every single microphone for the drum recordings and they will spend you know thousands and thousands of dollars and they will be kept in a mic locker and they'll just have access to everything it's okay but we've got to be realistic here now when i say buy a pre-made drum pack that is if you can afford it now we have techniques here where we can talk about using just one microphone to record your drums or two microphones or anywhere beyond that okay so if your budget can't buy you a kit or you don't have the audio interface to plug in seven microphones and record them at once, then you will be looking at a simpler version, which may be a one or two microphone approach that you then will buy an individual microphone. You won't buy one of those kits. Okay, so if we start off talking about a one mic approach, okay, this is obviously the simplest form for recording a drum kit. It is also going to be possibly the hardest to get the best sound from because you're reliant on this microphone capturing every element of your drum kit. And the amount of elements in a drum kit can be quite a lot, depending on the drum kit that you have. And to capture everything in that drum kit without being washed out by one drum or anything particular generally means that the microphone has to be a little bit away from the drum kit, which means that a lot of your room is going to come into this recording as well, a lot of the reverberation and all that sort of stuff. So in the diagrams, I've just shown some roughs of some popular techniques. Now, with any of these techniques I talk about, they are not just, they're not the rules, they are not stand, you know, you don't just go, they're the only ones on option, right? There is tons and tons of ways of placing your microphones on your drum kit. You can Google it. There's millions of ways to set up these microphones to capture what you want. And it's all about trial and error. Now, the first thing I always state with any instrument, and that includes drums. First off is 
don't even think about the microphones, the first off is to have your drum kit in the right spot wherever you wanted it to be recorded and to get it sounding right. That includes tuning the heads if you need to tune them. All right, if you don't know how to tune your heads, again, Google it, I'm not a drum expert, but drums do need to be tuned and a lot of people don't actually understand that. So first off, tune your drums, get them set up right so they sound great in the room without even a microphone. If your drums don't sound good in the room without a microphone, they're not gonna sound good with one, right? The microphone is basically like your ears, but without the bias of what humans have. It is just a raw device that just captures whatever hits it, okay? we our brains interpret things. So we can adjust the sound of things and make them appear better to ourselves and slightly different. Whereas a microphone doesn't, it just captures what it hits, what it gets. So the drums need to sound good first off, right? That's number one, right? So make sure your drums sound good, they sound good. Now you're ready for the next stage, which is setting up your mics. So as I said, the first most basic technique here, it, when I say basic, it's one microphone, so it's a basic setup, but it can also be the hardest to get right. So I have some drawings here of a few different uh, common ones that I've picked out for one mic approaches. As I said, there are plenty of other options. So we've got behind the drummer, we've got uh, sort of as an overhead, so sitting above the cymbals, and we have an audience style one, which is a bit further away. So what we have to balance with any of these approaches is trying to get the right sort of evenness of your drum kit, okay? Typical things with putting a microphone over the top of a drum kit is, is that's where the cymbals are sitting. So a lot of the time the cymbals will wash out the rest of the drums. So you can either change your technique so that you don't hit the cymbals so hard, which can be hard for some people, especially if you're a metal player or a heavy rock player some of these drummers like to smash those cymbals really hard and they can really wash out your drum kit. So, you know, you want to get your microphone in a place that captures all of the drums, but also doesn't get washed out by the cymbals. And again, as I said, that can be balancing where you place that microphone, but it can also be balancing your playing so that when you're recording, you may be back off on hitting those cymbals a little bit so that they're not so uh, in, in the microphone's face. Now for all of these techniques, the type of microphone you use, again, is up to you. Is you, you can try anything, okay? So generally, probably in a one mic approach, I would probably lean more towards a condenser style microphone because we want to capture as much as we can. Condenser is more sensitive. Dynamic microphones are a lot better for close miking straight on actual drums as opposed to capturing a lot of the area there. So probably in a one mic approach, I would go with a condenser, but again, it's not a golden rule. Now, if you can just stretch yourself to two microphones, we have a few more options with us now. So we can, we can stick with our standard sort of one mic behind the drummer or over the overhead or in the audience and then add a close mic on say this, the kick or the snare, something like that, depending on which one of those you want to have the greatest impact and control in your song, right? So if we add close microphones to our recordings, it gives us a little bit more uh, flexibility in our mixing stage to give, you know, priority to certain drums and to, to create more impact so we can make our kick stand out more or our snare stand out more, if it, especially if it's lacking in our single mic recording. Okay, again, we've got diagrams here and in the ebook. The other option is, is that you don't do the close micing and you basically take a stereo image, right? Because with a one mic approach, you are talking about a mono recording, right? There's no getting around that. Your drums will be mono. So what we're talking about now is with two mics, we could go for a stereo effect effect. So we could have the same sort of placement, whether it's behind the drummer or it's as an overhead. But what we're doing is now we can have two mics separated apart, sort of on the edge of the drum kit, one on one side, one on the other. And we can get a stereo effect now. Now the same sort of problems and issues, etc., are still inherent as it is with the one mic approach. But now 
we have stereo capability so we can have our, our drums spread out in our song a bit. So if we go even further and we go to a three mic approach, we can get even greater potential here. So again, we can stick with our single microphone, capturing all of our kit behind our drummer, overhead or in the audience, and then we have two separate mics that are close to one to the snare and one to the kick, right? The kick and the snare are generally our major components. They're the first ones you're gonna add close mics to if anything at all. Again, there can be exceptions to that depending on your song, but assuming that those two are generally the main elements in your drum kit that's gonna be used a lot, we may close mic those, right? And when we're talking about close micing, again, as I said, they will most likely potentially be dynamic microphones, right? And there's all different types. You can put SM57s on the snare. You can put all of this and that. But again, this is where I'd start looking at drum kit packs of microphones that are custom made for it. Or at least if you want to pick individual ones, pick one specifically designed and recommended for the element that you want to record on your drum kit. So the placement of these close mics can be obviously changed to get the sound, right? You can move them around, you can adjust them. On a kick, you know, a lot of the time, the uh, microphone will go inside the kick. Now that obviously relies on you having a hole in the outside skin to get the mic in there, or at least remove the skin to put the mic in, however you do it. And that's going to allow the microphone to get a lot of the beta sound of it hitting the thing with some of the boom as well. And on the snare, it's generally going to be pointed at an angle down towards the skin of the snare off on the side so that it can capture, you know, the actual sound of the snare. Now, where on the snare is going to depend on your snare. It's going to depend on your microphone and it's just going to depend on placement. You just need to try it and you need to move it around to get the best spot. There's just no other way around it. Now the other technique you can do with the three mic approach is similar to what I was talking about with the two where we can go for a stereo impact. But that means that we are only left then with one close mic. So we can do our stereo pair that's behind the drummer or in the overheads or in the audience to get our stereo overall drum sound. But then we can add one close mic so we can pick it to be on the kick or we can pick it to be on the snare whatever our main element is and the one that we want to enhance in our mix. So when we get to four microphones, now I wouldn't even question about the stereo or mono recording here. Four microphones, I would just straight away assume that I'm going for a stereo recording. So I'm gonna have two microphones either behind the drummer, on the overheads, or in the audience type thing to get that stereo overall sound of the drums. And then I'm going to probably, most of the time, add one microphone close to the kick and one microphone close to the snare. That's going to give us the greatest flexibility in our drum sound. We're going to have our overall sound through our two stereo mics, and we're going to have two close mics to get some more impact in our snare and in our kick. Now, when we get to five mics and beyond, that's where we can start taking that four microphone approach and adding extra elements in. So we can add microphone to the toms, you know, just close to the toms, or we could add individual ones on each tom, on the floor tom, the rack toms, whatever you want, you can add them there. You can add a microphone to the hi-hat if that's an important element that you need to really capture. If you're a heavy jazz player and the ride symbol is really important to you, you can have a mic pointed at the ride, either on the edge or on the bell if you hit the bell a lot. Right, the options there for you are, you know, limitless basically. So, you know, I would just take my four microphone approach and then just add mics in other various locations. But again, that is 100% up to you and your budget, how many audio interface inputs you have to record and whether you have all those microphones and you buy one of those big kits. All right, so if you are planning on recording real drums, in the ebook I have a worksheet. It is broken down into sections of a song. You can obviously change those sections, whatever you want. But what I want you to do is to write down there if you plan on recording real drums for those sections and 
if you're doing it and whatever you're doing and things like that and mark them off as you record them so that you know that you have done each of those elements or you're planning on doing those elements because what we want to do is get our drums recorded. Now with all the recording processes here I've already explained in other videos that we want to be doing this to a click track or a metronome. So having your headphones plugged in Playing to a click track is imperative to get everything in time. If you are somebody that's adamant to not play to a click track, just be prepared that you may be in some pain when it comes to the final product, trying to get everything in time. Unless you are a hundred percent somebody that can keep time without a click track perfect all the time, then go for it. You may just create really great songs without using a click track. But most of us humans will require a click track so that we can keep time with ourselves and make sure that all our elements are in time. All right, so if you have any questions about this topic, about recording real drums at all, I'm happy to help where I can. As I said, I don't have real drums, but I'm happy to research and discuss things with you. Leave your questions in the comments so that we can talk about these things and get you moving on recording your real drums if that's what you plan to do. If you are like me and you don't have real drums, don't worry. The next videos we're going to be talking about what I'm going to be creating and that's going to be virtual drums or electronic drums. So hopefully this video has been helpful. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.